product provided by Nintendo of Norway slash Bergson. The potential of a Princess Peach game feels relatively unexplored. While Super Princess Peach tried to deliver in that specific regard, it wasn't quite there. The gameplay mechanics were a bit clunky, and the road of progression really was all over the place. It was a game in its own little world, and ultimately, it proved a weird offshot that deserved a second outing to flesh out ideas. Since finally, creativity flowed the creaks of Nintendo's developers, and they allowed risks to happen to the princess. That is the key word here, risks, starting from the Super Mario Bros. movie. That is what Princess Peach Showtime in Fury and Tales. Everything about the title feels like a risk from its action game type feel to the costumes being their own self-contained levels. Princess Peach Showtime is the answer of the trivia question. What is the little Nintendo Switch that dared to be different? For that alone, Princess Peach Showtime, and more so its developer Good Feel, deserve a lot of praise. There isn't something quite like it on the system, which in turn creates some unique problems that really stand out. Before we go knee deep in that kind of specifics, let's step back just a bit. Since what, ladies and gentlemen, is Princess Peach Showtime all about? Princess Peach getting invited to an entertainment venue known as the Sparkle Theatre, where creatures known as feats perform a variety of plays. Peach doesn't get to enjoy the festivities for long though, since Madame Grape and her sour bunch storm into the theatre, taking the place and its inhabitants hostage. Their goal to destroy the theater and lock away the powers of feats that protect 10 different jobs held in high regard. From here on out, it is up to you as Peach and the theater spirit Stella to set things straight. The story is told through unspoken dialogue, yet everything feels alive. The 3D CG cutscenes are incredibly well animated, and even the in-engine scenes have a spark to them. An awful lot of care went into making the game tick on a visual level. While the story is simple, its setup is equally simple. <laughs> Even then, overcoming said odds are presented in an optimistic way, brought to life by 10 different ability changing costumes. And this is what makes Princess Peach Showtime a joy to be around. When it comes to gameplay, however, that is where it's a little bit different to describe Princess Peach Showtime. Is Showtime an action game? Yes, but not the straightest sense of the word. The 10 costumes that the player will interact with all do something different and make for a diverse playground that never feels the same. In your introduction to a costume, you will play as Peach for a little while, making them levels of two halves. Peach in practice might play a bit clunky, she's not particularly fast, nor are her jumps particularly satisfying. Not badly put together in any way, but in her base form, it is not the reason you started the game in the first place. Luckily, from the moment we interacted with the first costume, the sword fight, the mood instantly shifted. That costume looked oh so clean. Peach moved more swiftly across the stage and slices with the sword, with such an elegance, which are a joy to behold. There was substance to the proceedings, and you were more inclined to try every wrinkle. Jump dodges deliver satisfying moments in the combat-heavy sections and make you want to keep a close eye on your opponents. Speaking of dodges, the only negative part is that dodging with your attack move feels too staged. Excuse the pun. This specific dodge is only available in a few jobs, but we mostly avoided using it when we could. Overall though, the costume system left a good first impression, and it kept building beyond that point at a satisfying rate. It would take far too long to discuss every single costume, so let's stick to both low and highlights of the 8 hour trip. Ninja Peach was by far our favorite out of the bunch. It has the swift movement of the sword fighter, but adds so many fun mechanics that make the costume uniquely its own thing. As a ninja, you can hide yourself in the environment or grass, allowing you to strike out of nowhere, plus the ability to jump from wall to wall, all supplemented by fun challenges, all the while where you collect the necessary trinkets. Another entertaining costume is Mighty Peach. They basically become a Sentai superhero. You fight alien scum and are able to basically lift abandoned bosses like it is nothing. You're also getting some shoot 'em up sections where you are, in fact, the weapon the enemies will have to deal with. While we don't think Detective Peach is bad, it is weird at odds with the rest of the game. You are a detective, solve clues and get to the bottom of what the Sour Bunch are up to. It is never really high stakes or mind crushingly hard, but we didn't mind the proceedings here. Still, the detective elements feel like they're stuck in their own little bubble. But luckily for Princess Peach, 
only actively disappointing section was Mermaid Peach. Instead of really interacting with the environment, you take control of a school of fish who basically do everything for you. It is weird to control as you hold the action button and move the fish instead of yourself. With how many action sequences this game offers, this feels a bit out there and simply not as fun to play. With the mermaid being the sole exception, most of the 31 main levels are quite entertaining to get through. Every level has a set amount of sparkles to collect, which you receive in a variety of ways. You might have to fill in part of the landscape, partake in special challenges, or simply go through the beats of the level. On top of that, you can earn an additional costume for either Stella or Peach. That being said, the sheer variety of level content really left us bored or irritated. Even when there's something that felt lesser, it was over before we got ticked off about it. Showtime really excels at giving the player a million different things to do, and it shows. And what partially helps in that regard is that every level feels like its own self-contained story. The detective levels really see you diving deep into the foolishness of the crooks. You either stop them from stealing artifacts in a museum, or preventing a bomb from exploding in a clock tower. The patissier, or cooking peach levels, are equally interesting as you stop the world from falling apart by creating perfect sweets. Every level has purpose, making it that more enticing to carry on playing. Another reason to keep on playing are the excellent bosses that you come across. Many bosses in particular are well inspired, theming after the stage or costume at play. As Kung Fu Peach, encounter a sour bunch Kung Fu Master, of which you have to block the strikes. Another instance, as Figure Skater Peach, just you duking it out against an evil figure skater who has put all the feats under his command. By twirling around him and taking his balance down a peg, you easily overcome the foe in question. A few repeats here and there, but never in an irritating way. It all just feels part of that specific arc. The main bosses are incredibly fun as well. While you fight as Peach here, their attack patterns are so well versed that we really didn't mind. Take the first boss for example, named Disco Wing. They will lay disco balls which you have to bounce back in their direction. Sounds simple. But some balls are fake, and they will keep changing the terrain like nobody's business. All the bosses follow this type of pattern, or patterns to defeat them might take a bit to figure out. The main criticism leveled to Princess Peach Showtime is that it isn't all that difficult. While it is true to a certain extent that the game can be beaten by anyone, we don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that. Like we said before, with so much variety in tow, the game had a hard time being bored. Every part of the screen lose charm and ask for solid input. We lost a life a few times, but it never edged on the frustrating end. Yes, clearly this is meant for children, but the overall title was pleasant to play for. And sometimes that is good enough as well. You don't need to be challenged to enjoy yourself, and that is very much true right here. In terms of presentation, Princess Peach Showtime looks extremely colourful. The stage plays are incredibly well designed, making big and chunky set pieces happen. The way the rooms shift, environments come to life, and everything in the game just clicks is wonderful to behold. There are a few frame rate dips here and there, but never anything majorly awful or something that makes the title inherently on play. All while the music is likely the best we have heard in a good feel game in a hot minute. While we enjoy the music of the Japan exclusive Mamedano Bakuro, the team really pulled out all the stops here. For the first time since Yoshi's Woolly World, the tones are extremely welcoming and feel part of the gameplay experience. As a whole, Princess Peach Showtime is a surprisingly good game. The costumes are fun to toy around with, the stages are varied and the story bits are quite cute. The experience doesn't sit still, something we can blame to the best of the games. There's always something happening, making the journey that much more entertaining. Obviously, Far from everything is perfect. Peach in her base form can feel a bit clunky. The less said about Met the Mermaid, the better. Add in a few frame rate issues there, and yeah, you have a little bit more mixed bag. That being said, there's so much to like about this audible of a game, and it has some of the best bosses seen in a hot minute. Even with the lesson difficulty, we will take that every day of the week. We give Princess Peach Showtime, our brutally honest review score of a good 77 out of 100. And there you have it for the only brand new Nintendo franchise game released so far in 2024. Are you picking up Princess Peach Showtime or are you waiting for Paper Mario the Thousand Year Tour on the Nintendo Switch? Sound off in the comment section down below.
If you haven't already, then be sure to leave a like, subscribe and press the notification bell. A big thanks to you for watching and the same goes to all our great patreon.com slash common patrons. You rock and please enjoy one or both of these two awesome videos.